Hi guys, so Boris Johnson may have lied in Parliament on Monday once again. It seems that the Chief Medical Officer for England may not be supportive of this easing of lockdown which, which allows children to return to school on the 8th of March. Now, on Monday, Boris Johnson re uh, released his statement in Parliament for these four tests that need to be completed. And he talked about how schools will be reopening on the 8th of March. It seems last Friday, according to The Guardian, the chief medical officer, Chris Whitty, um, was not supportive of this. So I, don't, I want to read part of this report from The Guardian. It says the chief medical officer for England said was said to be reluctant to put his name to a public show of support for the policy this week. Education sources had told The Guardian that Whitty was very unhappy with the idea of all 10 million children and staff returning to schools in England on the 8th of March, although the government denied this and insisted that Whitty was not opposed to any of the options being discussed. Boris Johnson in Parliament says that everyone is behind him and Boris Johnson lies. So should we, should we trust Boris Johnson or should we trust Chris Whitty? I think it's important to wait until Chris Whitty comes forward and says, yes, I fully support this, uh, this um, return to normality for students. On Monday, the Prime Minister is said to announce the government. So this is from last Friday. So Boris Johnson did announce his roadmap uh, for lifting national re lockdown restrictions in place since the start of the year. While publicly ministers have committed to reopening schools from the 8th of March, rather than all pupils returning to the, uh, on that date, number 10 is said to be planning for an across the board return for all year groups. And that was what happened on Monday. Boris Johnson said, uh, all children will return on the 8th of March. But school leaders are increasingly worried, having expected a phased return, especially in secondary schools, to enable COVID tests to be administered. School, schools are currently open only to vulnerable pe um, pupils and uh, the children of key workers. So there is a concern, of course, in schools that you know we're not ready to go back into this. Ministers and senior Policymakers, including permanent secretaries, have attempted to convince Witte that he needs to make a public statement of support for the policy to reassure parents and children about safety, it is understood. I, I don't think this is a very good idea, putting pressure on Chris Witte to support something that he doesn't believe is a, right, a good idea. He'd be supporting the government for political reasons, not scientific reasons. But so far, he has not um, provided an, an endorsement to be included in the media materials to, to be distributed ahead of Monday's announcement. So we haven't heard anything from, from at the time of the recording of this video, I haven't heard anything from Chris Whitty that may change. But why are parents and teachers concerned? Well, they're concerned about the testing, but they're also concerned about vaccines. And I want to show you this interview that uh, Eddie Moore had with uh, a, a, um, a trainee teacher who's extremely concerned about the fact that he hasn't been offered a vaccine. Let's hear what he had to say. Extremely happy about March the 8th with uh, schools going back, but it's lined with extreme disappointment as well. What's causing your disappointment? So I'm, I'm I, as I said, I'm a trainee teacher and I, uh, at the moment, am working remotely because I have a pregnant wife Who's, who's seven months pregnant. Um, uh, I haven't been offered the vaccine at all. No teachers I know except for in special schools have been offered the vaccine. Uh, the um... Just to interrupt, I have to tell you that here in Italy, all teachers have been offered a vaccine and some teachers, <clears throat> excuse me, have already taken the vaccine and ha it has been administered to some teachers. So I, I think Providing teachers with the vaccine is extremely important because they're, in a sense, on the front line. I, I, I think it's an absolute disgrace to even consider uh, consider schools going back on March the 8th without taking into account, which has to be a scientific reason, I mean, it has to be, uh, that the uh, it, 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 send the, send the teachers back, if they should catch it, there will be more teachers off again, the schools will get called off again, 
And we may not go into lockdown in that case, but the schools may end up having to cancel classes because not enough teachers are there. And it's interesting, Keir Starmer in his response did raise uh, the prospect. He said there were several areas where uh, teachers, he said, could have been vaccinated, everyone in the area, in one weekend without getting in the way of the vaccine programme. And he wondered why that wasn't happening. I agree 100%. There, you know, If you're going to send teachers back into the workplace, if, if they're not in the workplace at the moment because it's not safe, and you say we need you to go back in, then it has to be related to the, having a vaccine. It doesn't make sense to say you just go back in and then we'll give you the vaccine some other time. And if there is, as Matt Hancock and Boris Johnson have said, there is surplus there are there are surplus vaccines, then it would make sense to vaccinate. You can you you have your program, but you can adapt the program as necessary. I I don't think that's such a difficult task. Yeah, I mean, I, I was listening to the responses, and my my thoughts on it were I was listening to I think there were three or four, maybe even five points in the response, and it upset me a little bit that even though it was said. It was said in the midst of everything else, of other very important things. So what I keep on hearing is it keeps on getting brushed to the side or forgotten about, about vaccinating teachers. Yes, people are talking about it, but the response never comes, as we know with politicians, where they kind of go, OK, well, I can respond to these points instead. And so for me at the moment, I know I'm sitting here wanting to get a vaccine. I'm going, you know, late to the to these uh, vaccine centres to try and get the leftovers and being told they're being allocated to somewhere else. Someone else, actually, they're being thrown away, the security guards have told me. So, I mean, <laughs> well, I, I'm in a position where I am not going to be able to go back into the schools on March the 8th unless I'm vaccinated at least a couple of weeks beforehand so that my wife doesn't catch, so I don't pass COVID onto my wife. I mean, they, they, I can't be the only person going through this. And the government really have to do something when all it would take is two or three days to vaccinate every teacher in this country. He's right. <laughs> Take a few days to vaccinate all of the teachers. Why the government are not doing it, I don't know. Maybe it's because they they don't actually have the spare capacity that they're talking about. Maybe they don't actually have this surplus. Um, it's hard to know because there is a lack of transparency. But I think it's important if you're going to reopen the schools to vaccinate the teachers. As this man has said, it doesn't require a a huge amount of time if you have the surplus supply. Um, I don't know whether it's true what he was saying about um, supplies being thrown in the bin when he arrived to, to, when the security guard was telling him uh, that they were being thrown in the bin. That's extremely concerning. I hope that's not the case because there would be no sense behind that um, unless they, they can't be stored for a longer period of time i have no idea but vaccinate the teachers then open the schools then send the, the kids back that makes pr- the best sense in my mind let me know in the comment section guys what you think as always your comments are greatly appreciated thanks a lot i want to say a big big thank you to all of my patrons you ensure that this channel continues to exist i'm eternally grateful for all of your support if you join patreon you will receive instant access to our discord server where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?